Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to um, <clears throat> welcome to another a li another live stream. Um, so uh, we've been I've been trying to get the lighting right today, but um, you'll have to forgive me. I think it's still a little bit dark. <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, a few little uh, housekeeping things. Um, it, there's a there's obviously our training is on pause due to lockdown two. <clears throat> We're still looking at uh, possibly starting on um, December the seventh. Um, no government um, news to to say we're not going to start on the seventh, uh, which does mean uh, the Christmas party in a mini a mini Christmas party on the uh, on the tenth of December. Um, we can have a maximum of uh, thirty people, so um, kind of work towards that. I'll be hopefully putting out a. <clears throat> um, uh, um, a Facebook post for that so you can get yourself tickets to that there will be uh, obviously not going to the restaurant afterwards um, unless of course the government allow it uh, in which case maybe we can have um, 10 10 tables of 3 <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whatever but um, <laughs> on the 10th of December the other things uh, um I mentioned last week we got a couple of spaces on the cave trip to Kefalonia um, in April. So we've got a couple of spaces still spare for that. So if you're interested in some um, um, extreme location free diving, um, you know, uh, to see places like this um, with crystal clear water and the entrance to the cave is like this, if you want to see that, um, then just message me and uh now i'll give you the details about the um the cave trip we are also uh, moving ahead with the trip to egypt uh every day, every year we go to egypt to mos alam uh in june so we're looking at going on the 10th and i will be taking deposits um straight after this i will put up a message on facebook um and um you can you can um um yeah you can you can book for that um a couple of people online uh so i've got a question uh you keeping up with jiu-jitsu in lockdown marcus we'd love to see uh more bjj vids <laughs> yes uh of course of course i'm not training jiu-jitsu in lockdown too no 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 and if i was training jiu-jitsu I wouldn't be filming it to make videos because it's illegal. So um, I have got plans. I had got plans of making a new BJJ video next. Um, oh no, no, now this November. But uh, obviously lockdown kind of put pay to that idea, so I've moved it to January. So don't worry, there will be some new new jujitsu videos coming out in January, um, and again in uh, one in March. I've got some plans, some really good ones. So yeah, um, <clears throat> for now um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, training, uh, you and your training. And weirdly enough, um, I was thinking about this earlier and what to do. And I was, it relates to jujitsu as much as it relates to freediving. Now this is a freediving Q and A um, or uh, freediving live stream that you know. Uh, I, I, if we've got time at the end, uh, I'll ask answer some questions. Um, but the principles of this uh, do carry over to to free dive. In fact, they carry on to to most um, most sports. Actually, most sports, um, even maybe activities. Uh, I'm not going to think about it too much. But yeah, they they it, it, they they do kind of uh, correlate. So. I asked uh, on Facebook when I have just put out the, uh, earlier to pe people to bring pen and paper. So uh, get your pen and paper out, and um, uh, we'll we'll kind of um, oh I, I, I'm 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 I am umming and ahhing because I there's something I, I was going to mention I completely forgot uh, the Iceland trip in May is going ahead. So uh, if you want to come free diving in Iceland in May. Then stay posted to Facebook, and the, the um, sign-up sheet will go up um, over the weekend. So I knew they'll say I've forgotten. 
Okay, but for the time being, let's go back to this uh, pen and paper. And I've titled this uh, You and Your Training. So um, I want you to write down on your piece of paper. Uh, I want you to write down same question uh, as same question as I asked last week. Why do you free dive? And you should have this front and center pretty much whenever you're developing a training program. And we're now looking at January uh, training. Yes, there hopefully will be some pool sessions in December, but realistically, we're not going to get back to training until January. And that goes the same with jiu-jitsu in the UK anyway. Um, and pretty much any other sport that you fancy doing. So we're looking at January 2021. And when you're deciding what you're going to do and you're planning what you what you want to do uh, in 2021, you should have front and center, why do I free dive? Right. Or why do I do whichever activity it is I want? The next question is, uh, I want you to write down on your piece of paper um, three goals, two goals, three goals, something like that, just objectives that you want to kind of reach. Now, last week, I, um, uh, was it week before? Uh, I talked about the fact that if you've written down, why do I free dive? And then your number one objective is uh, kind of depth, say 20 meters, um, you are instantly uh, diverging so you free dive maybe you free dive because you like seeing fish fantastic maybe you know what it was it about the sport that you're doing that you enjoy and let, let's, let's go with free diving for this so you like seeing fish and then number one objective is do to do 20 meters so instantly you're going to be going along a path that will not uh satisfy the reason why you free dive so you're going to have this disparity and you're not going to enjoy or, or your training because the end result is not what you why you why you do the sport now if you were to say i enjoy seeing fish and a, a goal would be to do um to to to, to dive on a, a on a reef that you know in mars alum um that's 20 meters that's slightly different because being able to make it to the reef is one of the objectives. You have to be able to dive to the reef at 20 meters. So you're working towards it, diving 20 meters. But you're not just going to quit when you get to 20 meters because you want to see some fish. So you want to be able to be comfortable at 20 meters. Equally well, if you don't get the skills together in time uh, to hit 20 meters, you can still enjoy the reef from maybe 18 or 15 meters. Okay? So we're blurring uh, those uh, kind of um, objectives to allow you the best possibility of enjoying it rather than well, I didn't make 20 meters that's it I quit or I did make 20 meters I said I quit <laughs> so 20 meters might be part of the goal get into the reef that's 20 meters but you want to spend some time there and see some fish there okay. so have a look at your goals and then the next question is why are you not hitting those goals why are you not hitting those goals all right so you've got three goals have a look down them you may see some common and um, common traits and you don't have to do this right now i mean the first two you could do now but you know maybe as we go into these questions you can start thinking about them a little bit more and, and, and take a bit more time on them so you don't have to do them right now why are you not hitting those goals? Next question is, what happens when you do hit those goals? Okay. Again, you want to think about them. You've got three goals. There should be three things that you do when you hit those goals. Okay. And I'm guessing they're not going to be quit. I'm guessing they're not going to be, all right, finish. All right. Again, the, the depth, if your goals are depth, Depth are, depth are only uh, own, only ego related. They're not the the a depth or a time or a distance is so external. It's such an external motivator that you know you kind of get there. It doesn't doesn't mean anything except for ego, except to show off to people, to tell other people I did this. And the trouble is with that is that 
um, your current set of friends, if you've just started a sport, it doesn't matter what the sport is, your current set of friends uh, might be impressed by doing a dive to say 20 meters. But as you join a free diving club, start training, or whatever the sport is, join a jiu-jitsu club, start, you know, you might say, I want to get my blue belt. And people that you're friends with at the moment, because you're starting at the, you know, this, this new sport, they might be impressed by blue belt. But when you join a club and start training towards it, you're going to meet people who are next level up or thinking the next level up. So instantly, this 20 meters that you went into this sport, going, I want to get 20 meters. You meet 100 people who can do 20 meters. Oh, well, um, maybe 30 meters. But as you work towards 30 meters, you're going to meet more people who can do that. 50 meters, 60 meters, 70 meters, whatever the depth is, as you get closer to it, you're going to be surrounded by people who can really do it. And, and therefore, the ego falls apart as a, as a, as a motivator. And, and, and it's, it's not good. It's not good. Anyway, so you've got your goals. You've got what's holding you back and what you're going to do when you get there. Well, let's have a look at, uh, at the goals. Now, uh, we broke down uh, training uh, with free diving um into 10 aspects okay and so here here we have the the five areas of training and the 10 aspects and especially in december i know we're in november but we're moving into december especially in december it's super important that you start looking at these um oh hang on a sec you can't see the other one there's a no tanks logo i can i can see in the way of uh, equalization so especially in december you want to really have uh, start looking at these um aspects and see how you can fit your training uh, around them why do i say december because december usually is dark and cold and you're not likely to be diving so much but more than that in december is disrupted by you know generally disrupted by a kind of you know party season okay so it's a really good time to sit down and look at these aspects because december is followed by january january is a great time time to start but most um new year's resolutions fail why because they're not they're not sustainable so december is a great time to try out these uh, try out some new training ideas. Think about where you want to take it. So that in January, you're ready to rock and roll and you're not going to, uh, you know that your training is sustainable. So December is a fantastic time to look at your training schedule. And start thinking about what you can do to to touch each of these, um, these aspects of training. And look, uh, if Lewis is still there, you can use this for jiu-jitsu. You can break down jiu-jitsu into certain parts, whether you break it down into different um, moves that you need to do or aspects of the sport, whatever. You can break it down yourself and then start thinking of how you're going to train those. Now, we're in lockdown in the UK. We're not allowed to train jiu-jitsu. We're not allowed to train freediving in a pool. So, and we can't even do our, and I can't even do our, um, uh, park sessions because you know only mad mad to meet up with one other person so we can't even do our club park sessions so it's even more important that we sit down and think about what we want to do so we've got our objectives and our goals okay and the reason why we free dive the objectives and the goals we can start working out how we're going to get to those so we've also written down what's stopping us and we can start working on them. And we can start working on them now. Now, free diving is essentially a pretty simple sport. Okay. I sum it up quite often, sum it up as moving efficiently underwater on a single breath. That's it. So clearly, breath hold is quite an important thing. So you can do that at home. You can sit on the sofa, hold your breath, you can walk around the park and hold your breath. You can do it. It's super easy. I think something's happened to the live feed because uh, it's just dropped right off. <laughs> okay, that doesn't matter. I'll just keep going. Just drop down to nobody watching. Um, so, what's that, what's that, what's that? yeah, so freedom, pretty, pretty simple. And in fact, 
you can you can break down all sports to their essential cause about and usually efficiency will come into it usually efficiency will come into it so free diving moving underwater efficiently on a single breath of air because the more efficient we are the longer we can do it okay? the longer we can hold a breath the longer we can do it okay so essentially these are the two sides we're we're working on efficiency breath hold breath hold there is no excuse for anybody not to be practicing their breath hold we've got some fantastically um uh, simple uh, breath hold tables called the lazy tables which they take um you know under 10 minutes to do you can do it every day you can sit and hold your breath watching tv you can sit and hold your breath or i nearly said sit and hold your breath while out walking that doesn't matter you can go hold your breath while you're walking you don't have to do hard holds you don't have to do long holds you don't have to get you know, push or you know any sort of name danger of of, of blacking out just holding your breath getting used to what happens and get used to how your body feels when you're holding your breath super easy you can do it the efficiency side of things is a little bit trickier to do during lockdown when you can't get in the water okay there are exercises we do have uh, finning exercises which in fact maybe i'll do that next week some finning exercises you can do to build up muscles and the strength in the muscles they're not ideal much better would be to be in a pool uh, finning but they are um useful especially as we can't get in the pool so maybe i'll do some uh, finning exercises uh, in the next couple of weeks and i did say next week but i think i've got a little bit of surprise for you next month next monday but we will work on some uh monofin uh strength exercises we've done a monofin stretching which again you can do uh we've covered it in a, in a couple of a couple of these so the monofin strength exercises we we can work on a couple of those as well getting ourselves ready for january when we get back in the water okay. so let's go back to these aspects so uh let's have a look so we've got mental uh, before and during so it's hard to work on mental during if we're not in the water okay these are the thoughts you have while you're diving all right yes you can practice them and uh, one of the exercises the visual walks which we've covered it before all these exercises we've covered in these live feeds so visual walks will help during but more pertinent to this lecture you and your training is the mental before how you see the dive now if i were to say to you okay i want you to hold your breath for uh 10 minutes you'll probably go i can't do that if I said you hold your breath for 30 seconds right now, you'd go, yeah, of course I can. And there's something different in your your mental uh, kind of uh, your mental uh, thought process. One, no way, can't do it. One, easy. So you've got to find that little edge where, um, yeah, maybe you think, oh, maybe, and move that to the fact that you can do it. Super easy and build up that so uh when you know moving towards a dive i can do it i can do that that's something i can do whether you whether you're going to do it next next time you dive or next time you uh, get in the water or uh you know next next year i can do it i might not do it but i can do it and this is positive mental attitude which i think in fact that was the first quiz i did on all these lockdown uh live streams first quiz positive mental attitude who said it but anyway so that's how you build this up and start working with it playing with it thinking about it do it now physical we've got specifics we've got stretching and the exercises which i've mentioned we'll do in a couple of weeks and the cardio work which i know i have said to several people especially on the jiu-jitsu channel that cardio is not uh very it is very specific cardio specific this all the evidence uh, new uh, new training ex evidence is that cardio is very specific yes if you can run uh, you know kind of a long way yes you're going to be slightly better at cardio but it doesn't mean to say you're going to be able to swim very well okay so it doesn't cross over having said that if all you've got is park runs then do park runs um this is actually that's a that's a that's a that's a good thing good point you should have a hierarchy of training you should have a hierarchy of training and it doesn't matter what sport you're talking about 
Top is the sport because you enjoy it. So if somebody gives you the opportunity to free dive in a lake, take it. Don't care about anything else, take it. If they don't, uh, if they offer you uh, the opportunity to free dive in a pool, take it. Under that is uh, you know, training in a, uh, with friends in a park and then solo training for sake of argument. And have this hierarchy of training. And I'm going to do this one. I am going to train at home tonight. Somebody brings you, oh, do you want to come train a park? Yes. Absolutely. I don't care about my training at home. That doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if it's part of my of a program, a long program. The next one up is better than training at home. Training in the pool should always come second to it. So if somebody rings you up and say, do you want to go to the lake? Yes, because that's the top one. We're talking about in the UK. Obviously, if somebody says you want to dive in the sea uh, in a beautiful location, you're going to want to do that anyway, hopefully, because that's why you free dive. Anyway, hierarchy of training, and you should be able you know, to think about this. Okay, sure. Anyway, back to physical. So specific physical training, I'm going to give you some dry exercises to do for, for monofilling. And we've got the stretching exercises on there. Adaptation, uh, we've got um, uh, bedtime stretches, which you should be doing every day. Hope you're doing it. Uh, and depth adaptation. I don't think it's efficient for you to do depth adaptation during lockdown. Just don't think it is. Yes, there will be some aspects of it that you can practice with depth walks or uh, visualization walks. Realistically, you know, you're doing visualization walks, that's fine. But I wouldn't particularly worry about you know, de depth adaptation during lockdown. Breath hold. Easy to do. Stress breath hold and stress breath hold. Basically, stress breath hold is when you're walking around, generating loads of carbon dioxide. Unstressed breath hold is uh, when you're you know, sitting on the sofa. And then technique at the end, not really uh, the propulsion procedures, not really something you really want to worry about during lockdown. Because, yes, you could do it, but it's so much easier to do in, in water, so you want to do it there. Equalization, ETT, and Bombilla, you know, it makes sense. Okay, so start writing down, start by writing down why you free dive objectives and goals what stopping you getting to those objectives and goals and lockdown is not a reason for you not getting there denied uh, and then um, start thinking about how you can get there all okay. right start thinking about it please 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 i want lots of emails from people or facebook messenger messenger messages from people asking me how do i fit this in how do i fit this if you've seen this and you've seen it this week heck if you've seen it in two weeks time message me ask me how can i fit this into my routine this is my objective this is what's stopping me how can i help how can i I'll do that i really really want people to engage with that thought process all right um one question uh yeah, we've got time for a question. So that's that's it. That's me, you and your training. That's, that's I've, I've kind of covered that. Um, and all the training exercises, you say, they've, they've all been on the, on the live streams. But there was one question, which came in uh, about um, somebody has held their breath, some Hollywood actress, I can't remember her name, held her breath for seven minutes uh, during filming of a latest film. It came up on one of the forums. And this was linked with Kirk Crack, and his technical freediving, where he's using mixed gases to freedive. Well, somebody asked me about it. And, and I, I said, well, okay, I'm going to talk about it. Um, I can't remember who asked me. Uh, it was in a conversation. And I said, it's insanely unsafe. Sorry, Kirk Crack. You're probably not watching, but if you are watching, I'm sorry. It is insanely dangerous. And why is it insanely dangerous? Well, um, one of the uh, Eric Fatter, in fact, was in an interview said we're virtually eliminating hypoxia. So hypoxia is when you black out because you haven't got enough oxygen. Okay, and what happens is uh, 
you take your your subconscious takes over your body and breathes for you okay this is hypoxia low oxygen so if you breathe up on pure oxygen and you do a breath hold, it doesn't matter about depth, let's not talk about oxygen toxicity on depth, just talk about holding your breath, you've got plenty of oxygen. And Eric Fattar said, we are virtually eliminating hypoxia. Fantastic. Trouble is, you are encouraging hypercapnia, not um. Uh, not hypocapnia, hypercapnia, high carbon dioxide. Now, what happens when you get high carbon dioxide? Muscles do not function, they spasm and then stop working. So if you're breathing up on full, pure oxygen, and then hold your breath, your oxygen levels are going to stay high. You're not going to black out, but your CO2 levels are going to go insanely high. And it's quite hard to do the research because there's not many cases of high carbon dioxide, so high that it's you know dangerous. Um, the only research, or the way I found, uh, the research I found was uh, with uh, anaesthetists and what happens if somebody's uh, CO2 level goes too high, okay? And it's well documented, it's just not easily found because not many cases of it happen in normal day-to-day -day life. Your heart will stop. If CO2 levels get too high, your heart will stop. And you'll black out. Now, let's look at the two scenarios. You've blacked out because you've got low oxygen, but your heart's still pumping. Your heart is still pumping away. So somebody breathing for you, or taking you out, to start with taking you out uh, into the air, you can start breathing. And the fresh oxygen that's in your lungs will get pumped around your body and you will come back. There are not many cases of death after a rescue from hypoxia. It just doesn't happen because the heart's still pumping. You put air into the lungs, the heart's still pumping, it will pump the oxygen around the body. We come back. High carbon dioxide, which is being uh, pushed by Kurt Crack, Eric Fattar, and the PFI um, Performance Freediving Institute, and they've just got uh, some new courses out there for mixed gases of free for free diving on mixed gases. In some scenarios, I can see most scenarios because you're going to get a high carbon dioxide and the heart stops. So how do you clear out carbon dioxide out of the blood? Well. You breathe fresh air into the lungs. So you take out the carbon dioxide. Number one, you've got to take out carbon dioxide out of the lungs, which means you've got to squeak, squeeze the people. I don't know. But say they've got no, you know, they breathed out when they've blacked out. And they may not have blacked out. Their heart might have, might have stopped and they might be fully conscious. You put fresh air in, either by your mouth to mouth or if they're conscious. <gasps> They breathe in fresh air with no carbon dioxide and loads of oxygen. <gasps> but the heart is not pumping to pump the CO2 rich blood out to get rid of the carbon dioxide. So if you're going to start playing around with mixed gases, the, the dangers are immense. Not only that, when you're diving deep, you, ha you are uh, coming up with oxygen toxicity, which is something that I uh, wrote about, uh, never published, but I wrote about it for uh, Herbert when he, after his, because uh, I was coaching him to, to, uh, to the, uh, 214 in 2007. Um, and I wrote uh, a quite a, 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 a investigated and wrote about it. It was never published. Maybe I should have published it about the effects of oxygen on to toxicity on a free diver when looking to go to 300 meters rather than going to 200 meters going to 300 meters what are the effects of oxygen toxicity and where will they come in and it was very interesting uh, i postulated that we could get to maybe uh, you know 250 270 before oxygen toxicity really uh is 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 um a major concern it'll have effects shallower but with a, a decently automate or automated system we can we can kind of combat them up to about 250 maybe 270 meters if you're breathing oxygen-rich air or nitrox or mixed gases, 
then this depth is going to become a lot shallower. The depth at which oxygen becomes poisonous will get shallower. And it's very easy to find, uh, you know, we can calculation, uh, the calculations are, are out there in most um, medium to high level, no, medium level uh, freediving courses, they talk about partial pressures and how oxygen, uh, what pressures, uh, oxygen becomes toxic. And you can work out which uh, amount of, um, you know, which gas mix becomes a toxic at what depth. And it's very, very easy to buy at your local scuba center a nitrox mix that would be dangerous in normal free diving depths. Okay. So mixed gas for free diving? Uh, uh, uh. Can't see it for me. Uh, the oxygen toxicity with, with a depth is an added danger and you can work it out and you can plan for it. Mm, the, you know, the, there are some kind of uh, arguments for it, but the um, the dangers of hypercapnia, um, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's seriously bad. We worked with it a few times uh, a few years ago and the results were not good. Okay, so that's uh, me done for tonight. Um, I'm really sorry about Friday night. I didn't uh, manage to get a live stream up or a uh, video, but hopefully uh, I'll do it this Friday, um, get some get some things going. If you have any ideas about what you'd like on a Friday uh, live stream, uh, put it in the messages uh, or message me and um, we, can, we can go through it there. So don't forget, next year we've got trips to Iceland in May, um, Greece for the cave trips. Hang on cave trips like that um and uh, that's in april iceland in may and in june we've got Marsa. Uh, and new year's day dive hopefully you know hopefully it'll happen on new year's day so thank you very much uh, any questions messages and uh, i'll see you either on friday or next week thank you very much